Okay, I'm gonna read you a book, my favorite book. Walter the Farting Dog, written by William Kotzwinkle and Glenn Murray and illustrated by Audrey Coleman. It's the funniest book in the world. This is for anyone who's ever felt misjudged or misunderstood, that is everybody. All right, let's learn about Walter. I actually have Walter. His name, his nickname's Wally but I'll show you the real Walter, the farting dog in a minute. Betty and Billy brought Walter home from the dog pound. Nobody wanted him, said Billy, but we love him. He smells awful, said their mother. I think you'd better give him a bath. That is Walter. I don't know who that is. That's Betty and Billy. There's a spider on every page, so see if you can find it. Mother walked in and said, he smells awful. And that's when they got the first clue, the telltale bubbles in the water. You know what that means. He probably's just a little nervous, said Mother, hopefully. His stomach must be upset. But Walter's stomach wasn't upset. Walter's stomach was fine. He felt perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. Can't help it. When you gotta go, you gotta go. See if you can find the spider. I don't even see the spider on that one. Oh, I found it. See if you can find it. Not gonna say where. He did it when he bathed. He did it when he played it with Betty and Billy. He did it when he walked around the house. He did it in the dining room. He did it in the kitchen and he did it in his sleep. He just did it a lot. See? All the spider. That dog farts morning, noon, and night, said Father. He can't help it, Daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mean, mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, Billy and Betty said. When they're alone in their room with Walter, Betty agreed. Walter agreed, too. He sat there looking innocently around, farting. <laughs> this is the funniest book. Take him to the vet, said Father. <laughs> he just sat there innocently, but he was still a farting, wasn't he? I see the spider. <laughs> farting, said the vet, or rectal flatulence, as we say in the medical profession, as prescribed. And he prescribed a change in diet. Oh dear, I wouldn't want to be that vet. Ooh. They gave Walter every kind of dog food. He farted. They tried him on cat food. They tried him on hot dogs, hamburgers, lettuce, tomatoes. They gave him fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. They gave him vegetarian. No matter what that dog eats, he tur it turns into farts, roared Father. Father's getting pretty mad. Oh, I didn't show you the picture. See? He tried every type of food. Everything. You know, those vegetables, just that just makes you go more. And cat food? No. Walter got the blame for everybody else's farts, too. If Uncle Irv let one slip, he just went and stood near Walter. Then all he had to say was, Walter! And everyone would just look at poor Walter. Our poor Wally, that happens to him a lot, too. Everybody blames everything on him. See? He didn't even do it that time. Mm, mm, mm. It's not good to blame your, your poots on someone else. He has to go back to the pound, said Father. No, Daddy, please, begged Betty and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said Father. They pleaded. Walter farted. <laughs> it's such a funny book. It was all over that night. Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them and happily, Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've got to stop farting because Father's going to send you back to the pound tomorrow. Oh, poor Walter. Look at him. He's just like, Oh, man. I just made him more nervous. He did it again. It's all the time. I don't know. 
Walter knew how serious the situation was, he'd never see Betty and Billy again. He resolved to hold his farts forever. Have you ever tried to do that? It doesn't work. When Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat, and he managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found a 25-pound bag of low-fart dog biscuits. <laughs> um, low... <laughs> That's so stupid. Low fart dog biscuits. I've never seen those. We should buy those. The vet had prescribed for him, which made him fart more. Even though he knew they made him fart more, he couldn't resist. He ate the entire bag. Very tasty, said Walter to himself. Look at him being a good dog, trying his best. You know, this reminds me of Jeff. <laughs> okay. And then he went and lay down on the sofa. A gigantic gas bubble began to build up inside of him, huge. This is going to be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he let it go. He thought maybe the house would explode. <laughs> That's pretty big. So he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture but he had resolved in never to fart again, ever. His future depended on it. As he lay there with his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise in the window. Look at poor Walter. Look how big he's getting. It's all gas. Did you see the spider? He watched it open slowly, and a pair of burglars came through. They dropped silently in the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, said one of the burglars. He won't bite, said the other. He's a wimp. Walter might have bitten them, but except he was so filled with gas he couldn't move. They tried, or they tied a rag around his snout so he couldn't bark. They didn't know that wasn't the issue. Okay, whispered the first burglar. Let's clear the place out. They took everything they could get their hands on. Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having unbearable gas pains. He rolled on his back, waved his paws in the air. He gnashed his teeth. He was trying to hold it in. We've got it all, said the second burglar. Burglar, let's go. Oh no, still in their stuff. And Walter, oh, I licked my fingers. Don't do that, Corona. That's when Walter let it fly. It was the worst fart of his life. It made a tremendous noise and shot him across the room. That's big. Never seen that happen. A hideous cloud filled the air. The burglars clutched their throats, <coughs> unable to breathe. With tears in their eyes, they raced to the window. They tried to grab their bag with all their valuables in it, but the, their arms were too weak. Let's get out of here. Ugh. See, he has that tied to his snout, but look what happened. Here, let me open that up so you can see. Look, it, it shot him across the room. It's pretty potent. It's a big one. They jumped out the window and ran up the block, choking and gasping for air, still blinded by Walter's attack. They stepped into the headlights of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, said the policeman. Look at that. See the spider? Walter saved the day. When father and mother came down in the morning, they found the open window and they saw the bag with all the valuables in it. And Walter was sitting beside it and he still had the rag tied around his little poor snout. You have to say he looked heroic. He saved the silverware, said mother. He saved the VCR, said father. VCR was, um, is like a DVD player, which you probably don't know what that is, but... It's kind of like Netflix. Good dog, Walter. You're our dog, even if you do fart all the time. See, he won Dad's heart. See, you see the spider? Two spiders now. 
They must like spiders. They say they're good luck, but I, I don't agree. And so the family learned to live with Walter, the hero dog. They changed his name. And that's the end of our tale. Look at that family photo. Look at that. Aren't they a beautiful family? Look, they even made Walter's Wonder Park. It's 100% natural gas powered. Natural gas. And there's the spotter. Okay, I'll, I'll send a picture of our farting dog, Walter, in real person here with us. Love you.